R slash ask Reddit. What's that story you've never been able to tell? When I was just a boy I was touched when I was getting my hair cut. My father had to make a quick run to the ATM. So we were alone. I never realized it affected me that much and honestly didn't even think about it for years until I drove by the place where the barber shop used to be and just felt immense stress. I would never tell my father, he has always been insecure about whether or not he's been a good father to me, this would make him hate himself. The time my mum needed to go back into the house to get a scarf. Because of this we were held back and missed a bus by 10 seconds. That bus then crashed into a bridge at very high speed because the bus driver had mental health problems. It is the closest I have ever been to death. I will never complain about my mum going back to get a scarf in my life again. It is not mind-blowing or anything of the sort, which is why I never told it, but when I first started getting sick and couldn't move around the house like usual, my cat would yell at me for two minutes until I sat down. He would proceed to purr furiously over my stomach, which was hurting, for about 10 minutes at a time. He would chirp at me if I tried to get up beforehand and keep bumping my leg as I walked past if I never sat down. Little did I know that he was trying to heal my cancer, that was growing into the muscle by that point. He's a little Siamese mix and he is very vocal, and I appreciate his little squeaks of support. He is a very good boy. In 7th grade one night I was like, I really don't feel like going to school tomorrow, so I looked up how to get a fever. I found a tutorial that said to take a bath at the hottest temperature your bathtub will go, and then stay up all night. I decided to try it and I started the water for a steaming hot bath. It stung to get in it, and I somehow survived it for 30 minutes, when I was getting out I felt dizzy and then. I fell on the floor and had a seizure. I woke up and saw the blinding ceiling lights of the bathroom and the first thing I thought was, am I dead? And then I threw up in the toilet next to me and had a migraine for the night. And later found out I got first degree burns. So long story short, don't do that. Around 42 years ago, my little brother was playing with matches and set the woods on fire, burned about 10 acres. Everyone but him that it was me smoking in the woods so he and I just let it be me. I took the blame, and the butt whooping, because dad was kinda rough on the butt whoopings when he was mad. And I didn't want my little brother to have to take it. Being that dad got a little carried away this time, broke my arm, we've just never told anyone the truth. When I was 17 I was D by the boy who lived up the street. When I finally got myself home I went to my dad and he yelled at me for not being home earlier. My phone got taken away and I was sent to my room. I couldn't even shower. I could never bring myself to tell him after that. I still never talk about it with anyone. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Western Samoa. One weekend several of my fellow volunteers and I went camping on this tiny private island. On the first or second night, we made a bonfire and all got super drunk then went skinny dipping. The water was only about chest deep, warm and still. There was no light pollution so the stars were blazingly bright. We also inadvertently kicked up some bioluminescence, filling the water with stars. Tipsily floating naked in the warm sea, completely surrounded on all sides by stars, and close friends is one of my most beautiful and euphoric memories. I had a chat with one of the most notorious s in my country. It was odd, he spoke in a way that made it seem like he was my age, I was 7. He eventually tried to trick me into touching his by buying me a hot dog and a soda. I only declined and bailed because I was low-key offended that he put mustard on the hot dog he was offering me. I nearly died at work. I was removing the main supply, 200 volts, 3P, wire on the machine we just successfully overhauled. The problem is, I wasn't aware that the main circuit breaker was still turned on. I already had the gut feeling to check the breaker, but I was stubborn and proceed to remove the wires. As I removed the second wire, I accidentally short-circuited it, creating a huge spark right in front of my eyes. First thing I did was to check my hand, which was thankfully unharmed, but had visible dark spots due to the strong electric current on the short-circuiting of the wires. Good thing I was half-conscious and went on to turn off the main circuit breaker. Some of my workmates saw and approached me while asking if everything was alright. After removing the wire, I took a walk and had a deep thought what might happen to me if those wires touched me. 
I might have suffered a severe third-degree burn, or lose a limb, or die from electrocution. Folks, always be careful and always trust your gut feeling. Back in the 90s, our neighbor's son had a dream that a treasure was buried under the huge acacia tree right by their house guarded by a gnome. The dad rented a backhoe and they dig up. It was big news, everyone in the village knew what they were up to. After a couple of days, they found nothing. The family left the village, relocated out of shame is what we all thought. A relative, I think an aunt, stayed. About 10 years ago, the son all grown up returned and had their old house renovated. That house is now the biggest in the entire village in a sprawling lot. He operates a few businesses, one of which is the only water purifying store, a huge business in my country, in the village. Right by their gate there's a gnome figurine. When I was about 14 I found a slingshot in the woods. It was a pretty good slingshot that must have cost a fair bit as it had a metal frame and a thick rubber sling. One day my friend and I were on top of a hill out in the countryside and a jogger came running out of the nearby tree line. He was some distance away and below us. Without putting a lot of thought into it I shot a stone just above his head. The rock went exactly where I wanted it to, but if there was wind, or my aim was off, or a thousand other factors, I would have seriously fudged that jogger up. I muse on that at least once a week. I never see my friend and we haven't spoken about it since it happened. Went to a weekend festival back in the 80s, decided to fudge a guy the first had just met down on the rocks by the ocean. It was quite awesome actually, warm summer air, getting down and sweaty, cooled off by the occasional wave spraying us. Anyhow, as we finished we suddenly hear resounding applause from above, look up and realize that we've put on a free show for a bunch of people sitting on a ledge above us. There was nothing to do but stand up, hold hands and take a bow. Not exactly a story you bring up in casual conversation. I've told this on Reddit before but never in person. So I was at a water park with a girl I had a huge crush on and some of our mutual friends. I'm not a big fan of rides, she had been trying to talk me into going on one all day, and I finally agreed to try out this one really intense looking slide. Basically you go down the slide while sitting on this big inflatable thing, and it was for two people so naturally I got paired up with the girl I had a crush on. We both climbed into the inflatable, which had these little handles on it for you to hold onto when you went down. When we went down the slide, it was way faster than I thought it would be. I accidentally let go of one of the handles, tried to grab it again, and ended up grabbing her hand instead by accident. I was really embar-butted but she put her other hand on top of mine until we reached the bottom. I guess she thought I was scared, which is also kinda embar butting, but it was a nice moment. She later went on to be my first kiss about six months later, and we're still close friends today. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe and smack that bell icon to stay up to date on our videos. See you next time.